No, you haven't stepped back in time. It is definitely still 2024. And this is the VW ID Buzz that we fell in love with over a year ago now. So you're probably thinking, <laughs> Why are we even here? Why should I bother paying attention over the next 15 minutes? Well, look, after the little electrifying swoosh thing, I'm going to explain to you why you should take a second look at the VW ID Buzz. But before we do that, make sure you subscribe to the Electrifying YouTube channel and click on the bell button. Then you get notified of videos that go live and then everyone's just living their best lives, you know? The Volkswagen ID Buzz. Now, depending on your point of view, this is either an icon reborn for the electric era or a rather expensive electric van with extra seats. Yeah. Now, the reason that we are revisiting the Buzz a year on is because things have changed quite a bit. Not with the car, that's basically the same. Yeah, it's the bits that you can't see that have changed. Unless you've been living in a skip for the last 12 months, you'll know that the electric car market has been turned on its head. We've gone from there not being enough cars for buyers to there being not enough buyers for cars, which for us is a very good thing. Let's talk about availability. Now, when we first went live with the original video, you could not get a buzz for love nor money. Believe me, I tried both. If you wanted to get a two-tone version like this, VW was saying you've got to wait like a year and a half to get one. And if you wanted to jump the queue, you had to pay extra and pay like £75,000. I mean, the buzz around the buzz was buzzing. Today, that's all changed. According to VW, if you order a new one today, you'll get it in around 12 weeks. Not 12 months, 12 weeks. And it's not just the lead times that have changed. The finance situation is also quite different as well to what it was 12 months ago. If you are a private buyer and you use VW's own PCP scheme, you'll get a £5,500 deposit contribution without having to haggle. VW like to dress this up as a dealer contribution, but let's be honest here. It's five and a half grand discount, basically, isn't it? Which you certainly wouldn't have got a year ago. And if you're a business user and want contract hire, you'll be looking at £399 plus VAT a month for one of these. That is pretty blooming good. OK, enough about the figures. You are here for the car, aren't you? We all are, right. The thing is, is when I mentioned at the start of this video that not much has changed in here, that's not strictly true. The first car that we drove was a first edition and a lot of this just came in white. But you can now get this all in black if you want to, if you don't like showing up the dirt and things like that. But what I love is that VW continues to make the two-tone vibe going on inside here. Never change that, please, VW, because people that like black and grey, they've got a whole selection of cars. People that like a bit of funky colour, this is a lovely choice for you. And this green looks really nice, doesn't it? This is definitely the type of car that has been designed by somebody who understood the brief. I am making a big VW sort of camper style bus car. It needs some color and some brilliant, brilliant storage. Here we go. You have a little shelf in here, which is where I like to keep my mobile phone. You've got a glove pocket all the way down here, which is where you can keep some snacks and other things like that. Down here in the middle, this all has storage in here, but also if that gets a bit irritating and you need to put something else down the middle, you can remove that. Press that button, lift it up, get rid of it. Do that, yeah. And ice scraper, look at that. It's the little things, isn't it? Lovely. The glove box down here is also cup holders. Put your cups in there, put some things in there. Lovely, lovely. Storage in here. Another, well, proper glove box, but that's a very decent size. You want another shelf? Have another shelf right there. Everything in here is just blooming brilliant. Another upgrade, another thing that has changed is this. I haven't really been a fan of the whole VW infotainment thing. That just moved without me even touching. That was good, wasn't it? Do, do that again. That was just a fluke. I don't know what happened there, but I put my hand in front of the screen and it moved. No? Are you Darth Vader? <laughs> Maybe I am Darth Vader. It definitely moved, didn't it? <gasps> there we go. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, sorry, I just got distracted by that. <laughs> this is... <laughs> that's... that's brilliant, isn't it? Everything in here is way more intuitive than what it used to be because it used to be a bit flaky, bit glitchy, bit faffy, but everything in here works, obviously, 
without even blooming touching the thing. That's great. Uh, I'm still not a fan of this, the whole touchy slidey situation going on down here because they still don't light up, which is very irritating. But you will get used to it eventually. I keep telling myself that. Would we rather knobs and buttons? Yes, we would. But it works perfectly fine. You've got some shortcut buttons down here that all work perfectly well as well. The driving position is wonderful. The visibility in this car is top notch, like the best of the best. Your visibility is fantastic. You've got the side windows, the quarter windows down here, and then the massive windscreen, and everything in here feels vast and airy and beautiful. Also, can I give a shout out to the fact that you can control everything from the front here. So if you want to open the slidey doors from the back, you've got the buttons here. So you can open them there. If you want to open the gigantic boot, you can do that here. It's all very easy, isn't it? It's just something special about this thing. Something really special. Like I feel special sitting in it, you know? Hi there. First of all, I need to put my phone somewhere. Just gonna put that in there. Pocket. Use a little handle. Swing in. I mean, the space in here is blooming marvellous and I want to close the doors, but I don't want to use any energy because I'm lazy. I'm going to press that button there. Again, we have more storage. We've got a lovely little shelf in there with a charging port. You've got the big door bin down the bottom there, which is a very nice size. You also have a tray table for your, for your dinner have some bolognese or something and then spill it all over the furniture. Of course, I've got a nice little cup holder there. Cups only. <laughs> so stupid. <laughs> got some pockets here that you can put some sweets in and stuff. Space is the important part in here because it is vast. It is even bigger in the back. Shall we have a look? There's a lever. Right there. Put that there. Do it. Down like that. Come on the back. Right, so this boot is 1,121 litres. And then when you fold all the seats down and fold them flat, you've got 2,123 litres of space. It is massive. And it's also set up to eventually be a seven seater. It's not quite there yet, but it's getting there. Hopefully soon this will be a seven seater. But when it is, you've already got some charge ports there. You've got cup holders there. Nice little VW buzz in there. Also, uh, using this rear space is really, really handy because underneath here, this is where you keep your cables. And then you've got a little hook there if you want to put some bags in the back and keep them sturdy. You've got 12 volt there if you want to plug anything in. And then you pull this, releases a tow bar, which to be honest, you're probably not going to tow anything from this car because that's severely going to affect your range. And also worth noting, that that is how the boot opens. <laughs> so um, don't park too close to anything, but also very good in British weather when it's raining, because it's a blooming good shelter, isn't it? <gasps> do you know what you could do? You could have like a disposable barbecue here and then have like your sauces and all your bits and bobs there, and then everything can be done under shelter. It's good, isn't it? This car, every time you drive it, uh, just, it just makes me smile. I can't quite put my finger on exactly what it is. I think it's just one of those very special head turners. Like you sit in this car, you're slightly higher up than everyone else. It is so smooth and everyone turns their heads. Everyone turns their heads. And even when I'm driving my own car and I see a buzz drive past, I will turn around and have a look always. It's just something a little bit about this car. It's like you're hovering, like it's really smooth. Like it's not the most powerful thing in the world. You've got 204 brake horsepower, uh, 310 Newton meters of torque, which actually does feel plenty. I mean, it's not the sort of car that you want to put your foot down and have fun with. This is a cruiser, isn't it? It's just one of those where you take out and about and you're like, yeah, look at me. Look at me in my VW ID bus. But look, if those numbers aren't quite enough for you, later on in the year, there will be an updated new motor that's going to be added that is more powerful and more efficient. So you'll get 283 brake horsepower and 505 Newton meters of torque. Treat yourself. 
But this thing, look, it doesn't roll as much in corners as you might expect it to. The steering feels really nice. I feel in complete control of this whole entire thing. There's Nikki! It's Nikki Shields. She was in an EV9. That was weird. She just drove past in an EV9 and I'm in a bigger car, which is weird because the EV9 is massive. This is even bigger. There's always been one downside though when it comes to this car. It is the range. Okay, so they claim that you get a WLTP range of uh, 250 miles in this thing. You will not get that. You'll get around 190 to 210 because this has the aerodynamics of a supermarket <laughs> and it weighs like two and a half tons. So considering this is the kind of car that you would want to take on a holiday down the coast, that kind of thing, that's a bit disappointing. But the charging's pretty rapid. You've got 175 kilowatt charging if you get it into a fast charger quick enough, into a DC rapid charger. So you're not gonna be at the charge point for long. You'll just be visiting a bit more often than you would want to, I guess. Everyone's staring. Yeah. <laughs> That's what it is. Like, you, you feel so special because everyone's just looking at you the whole time. So the motor powers the rear wheels. So all the front has to do is steer. So you don't really, you know, when you put your foot down like this, you don't kind of get a pull from the steering wheel. Everything's pushed from the back, which just works really nice. Considering the size of this thing, there's no like squeakies or creaks or anything like that. It is so smooth. It is bloody smooth, this thing. It's absolutely brilliant. Oh, it just makes me smile so much. I really want them to improve the range on this thing. Once they do that, they are absolutely onto a winner. Yes, they're gonna be adding more power, but the range is the most important thing, isn't it, for a lot of people? Oh, would I still want one of these? Yeah, well, yeah, I would, yeah. Even though it will only do around 190 to 110, do I still want one? Yes, yeah, I do, yeah, yeah. I could make this work for my life. So the reason that we wanted to revisit the Buzz is because right now it's very competitive on the used market. You can get yourself a single colour, simple version of one of these for about £44,000, which I know, yes, is still very expensive, but that's still 12 grand cheaper than what it used to be. If you want to go for a two-tone with more goodies like this one, you can get one for around 50 grand if you don't mind being the second name on the logbook. So there you have it. The VW ID Buzz, a car that got better without even trying. Do you know what? This is a hard car to do a traditional verdict on because it's not a traditional car. And on paper, it's a disaster because it's expensive. It doesn't have very good range and it's only got five seats. If you are a spreadsheet person, this is not the car for you. This is a car that you buy with your heart and not your head. It's one of those very, very rare cars that just has a bit of soul and makes you smile every time you drive it. And you can't put a price on that. I mean, you can, like they have, but you know what I mean? Let us know what you think. Do you have one? If you do, I'm very jealous, but let us know in the comments section below and we'll see you next time.